So proceeding on to the first question, which quantity has the same units as those of energy per unit volume? Okay, so we know that energy, take any form of energy. Okay, I'm taking gravitational potential energy. E can be written as mgh, right? Okay, so what are the units of m? The unit of m is kg, right? What is the unit of g? G is acceleration due to gravity, right? So its unit is meter per second square right h is the unit of meter right so over here meter okay so over here i can write that kg meter square second minus 2 okay second can be written as s okay so what is the unit of volume volume is meter into meter into meter right so it's meter cube so energy per unit volume is what just divide this two quantity kg meter square second minus 2 divided by meter cube right so that means energy per unit volume is kg meter minus one second minus two okay so we have derived the units of energy per unit volume okay so now which of the following matches with this okay so first of all density so first of all is your density density is equal to your mass per unit volume right what is the unit of mass kg what is the unit of volume meter cube so it's kg meter minus three so it's incorrect right it does not match so what is the unit of force now force is equal to mass into acceleration the unit of mass is kg unit of acceleration is what meter second minus two okay does it match no it doesn't match so force is also incorrect so now coming to momentum momentum is what mass into velocity right so that means kg what is velocity distance per unit time so that means meter second inverse right so that means this also matches no this also does not match so coming to the fourth option that is pressure p pressure is equal to your force per unit area right what is force mass into acceleration okay we derive force right we am not i'm not writing again what is force kg meter second inverse right kg meter second minus two right this is force divided by area what is area meter square so over here we get that this is equal to your kg meter minus one second minus two does it match yes it matches okay so that means the correct option to question number one is option number d now proceeding on to the second question a list of four physical quantities is acceleration energy mass and temperature how many scalar quantities are there in the list okay we know that acceleration is a vector quantity right so that means this is not a uh, scalar quantity right energy is a scalar quantity okay because energy does not have any direction right so mass is also a scalar quantity because mass cannot be expressed in any form of a direction okay temperature is also a scalar quantity okay so these are the basics so the correct answer to this question is option number c that is your three so proceeding on to your question number three uh, object of mass 2m is moving with a velocity 3v okay so suppose there is the object the uh, mass of that object is how much 2m and that object is moving with a speed of 3v okay it collides with a stationary object of mass 4m okay so suppose this is the path and there is the mass of 4m the object sticks together after collision what is the final speed and the change in the total kinetic energy after the collision okay so this is the initial condition okay so finally what will happen the finally finally what will happen the 2m and the 4m will stick together right so what does it mean 2m and 4m stick together it means that 2m and 4 4m moves with the same velocity okay so 2m and 4m they will move with the same velocity that means they are sticking together so suppose the same velocity that they are moving is v1 okay so i can write over here the initial momentum of the system is equal to the final momentum of the system so you have to keep in mind that the momentum of the system is conserved not the individual masses okay we have discussed it in detail in our previous videos the link to be the link of which will be above okay so that means i can write that the initial momentum of 2m plus the initial momentum of 4m so this will be equal to the final momentum of 2m plus the final momentum of 4m okay so what is the initial momentum of 2m 2m is moving with a velocity 3v right so that means 2m mass is 2m 
velocity 3v plus what is the initial momentum of 4m the 4m mass is initially at 0 so 0 okay so this is equal to what is the final momentum of 2m 2m and it's moving with a velocity v1 right what is the final momentum of 4m 4m it's moving with a velocity same velocity v1 right so that means 6mv so this is equal to your 6mv1 right so that means v is equal to your v1 right so that means the final velocity that they both move with is v1 right is v okay so that means the final velocity of the two bodies that is of both of 2m and of 4m is v so in between option number a and option number b one would be correct okay so now we have to find a change in total kinetic energy also okay so see the what is the initial kinetic energy ei okay what is the kinetic energy of 2m half into velo mass mass is what 2m into velocity velocity is what 3v whole square okay what is the kinetic energy of uh, 4m zero why because it's not having any velocity right so this is equal to your 9 mv square okay so what is the final energy for 2m it's half into what is the mass mass is 2m what is the velocity with which it's moving it's v square v whole square okay it's v right so that means v squared okay what is the energy of 4m half into mass of 4m is 4m okay what is the velocity with which 4m is moving it's moving with the velocity v so v squared okay so from here we get that this is equal to your 3m v squared okay so that means what will be your change in the uh, so that means what will be your change in energy delta e should be equal to your initial energy minus of final energy right so that means what is initial energy 9 mv square what is final energy 3 mv square so that means the change in the energy is 6 mv square okay so that means option number b is the correct option so the answer to this question number three is option number b so proceeding on to the next question an object of mass 1 kg is thrown downward from a height of 20 meter okay the initial speed of the object is 6 meter per second okay the object hits the ground at a speed of 20 meter per second and we need to find out the work done by the air okay so if i just apply work energy theorem we can write that work done by your air plus work done by gravity that is mgh so this is equal to your change in kinetic energy right so work so what is the work done by the air we don't know right what is the work done by the gravity see it's falling a height h right so the work done by the gravity will be equal to mgh okay why because see mg is pointing in this direction and the displacement is occurring in the direction of the force right so that means this is plus mgh okay now what is the change in kinetic energy okay final kinetic energy is half into one into what is final velocity 20 right 20 squared okay what is the initial kinetic energy initial velocity 6 meter per second right so this is half into one into six squared okay so from here we get that work done by the air plus one into uh, 10 into what is h height is 20 right so this is equal to your 20 squared minus 6 squared by 2 okay so from here if you solve this we'll get work done by the air is equal to minus of 18 joule right so this is the work done by the air on the object okay so that means the work done on the air by the object will be negative of work done of this so the work done by the object to air so this will be negative of this so this will be your 18 joule right and they are asking what is the best estimate of energy transfer from the object to the air right so this is actually by the air to the object and we need to find out from the object to the air right so that means by the object to the air this will be negative of this right so that means this will be equal to your 18 joule so the correct option to this is option number b which is your 18 joule so 4b is the correct option so proceeding on to the next question an object of mass 8 kg is falling vertically through the air the drag force acting on that object is 60 newton we have to estimate the acceleration of the object okay so that means so this is the object right the mass of that object is the mass of that object is given in the question to be 8 kg right so downward there will be mg right 
okay so, and see wh where is the direction of the motion of the body the motion of the body is in the downward direction right and drag force always appear opposite to the motion of the body right so th this is the motion of the body in this direction downward so the drag force will be opposite to the motion of the body that is opposite to downward so that drag force will appear on the body on the upwards okay so that means the drag force is given to be in the question to be 60 newton right okay the summation of net forces along y axis is equal to your mass into acceleration along y axis i am just applying newton's law right newton's second law right now what is the net force along the y axis mg is acting downwards right so, so mg and d is acting upwards so minus d right so this is equal to your m times of acceleration along y axis right what is mg 80 right what is drag given in the question to be 60 so what is the mass mass is 8 into acceleration along y axis right so from here we get that 20 is equal to 8 times of acceleration along y axis so from here we get that the acceleration along y axis is 20 by 8 okay so that means the acceleration along y axis is 2.5 so that means the acceleration along y axis is 2.5 meter per second square so the correct option to this question is option number b 2.5 meter per second square